Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. Back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. Back in another segment with our series, 10 Minutes to Better Land Now. What I want to talk about today real quick is I want to talk about different types of marking measurements that may be on your compass. What happens is you know, there's a lot of compasses out there for sale. And sites like Amazon that carry, let's just say, Suunto compasses as an example. We're going to use that today. Uh, they sell Suunto compasses on Amazon, but they sell several different models of Suunto compass on Amazon. And you kind of have to pay attention to what you're getting because the MC2 model really comes in three different measurement types. And I have people come to classes once in a while. It happens two, three times a year. They've ordered a compass off Amazon and not gotten the compass they thought they were getting. They got a Suunto MC2, but instead of being in degrees, it was in mils. Or instead of being in degrees, it was a quadrant compass. So let's kind of look at that because in truth, any of those compasses will work if you're the one using the compass and you're not trying to give those readings or bearings to someone else. All of them will work. Any measurement system that's standardized that you're using time and again is going to be a standard system for you. But I want to explain to you kind of how these work so you understand and then we'll lay them on a map and I'll show you how each one of them will work for you if needs be. They're just not good for multiple people that don't have the same measurement system. So let's talk about the different readings first. So first of all is degrees. Obviously there's 360 degrees around a circle and that represents angles from the center of the circle, all right? A quadrant compass divides that circle into four equal parts or the fourth part of a circle is the quadrant, okay? So that's a 90 degree angle. And they are consistent with having a letter designation or letters de designation like a bearing. So you might have a degree reading of 15 degrees north, northeast. What that means is you're in the northeast quadrant of the compass, 15 degrees off of north, okay? And I'll show you that on the compass here in a minute on the map. Now, mills is a little bit different. Mills, there are approximately 6,400 mills around the circumference of a circle. And instead of kind of being an angular measurement, mills is more of a distance measurement of how far you are around the circle. And it's a lot more precise measurement system, which is why it's used for things like field artillery and military uses, calling for fire, things like that. However, it's so accurate and so minute that you really can't get a handheld reading from a compass that's going to give you an accurate reading in mills because even in degrees, if you notice like most of your Suunto compasses are down to like two degree increments, that's about as accurate as you're gonna get trying to cite something by hand. So with mills, there's 17.78 mills in a single degree, all right? There's no way you're gonna get that accurate with a handheld compass. So there's no advantage to using mills over degrees when it comes to land navigation. But it can be used if that's what you have on your compass because it's going to be repeatable. So now let's look at these different measurements on a map on a compass itself so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Okay, so all three of these compasses look virtually identical. And they're all Suunto MC2s. This one's in degrees, this one's in mils, and this one is in quadrant, okay? So the degree compass, obviously we don't need to go over because we've been using one this whole series, and it has 360 degrees around the bezel ring divided into two degree increments, okay? A quadrant compass, on the other hand, when you look at a quadrant compass, if you put north at the top of that compass, it goes from zero to 90, zero to 90, zero to 90, zero to 90. So it's set up in quadrants. So if we use that example from yesterday and we lay our compass on the map between those two points and we line up our orienteering lines on the compass. We make sure north is at the top. What we have is we have a 70 degree east southeast. All right. We are in between the east and the southeast. So we're east southeast 70 degrees. And you can see at the top of the compass, it's about 72, I guess, 72 degrees. 
east, southeast, east, southeast, all right? We're between that 90 degrees between east and south, or closer to the east than we are to south, so we're east, southeast, okay? Now, if you use this measurement system all the time, it wouldn't matter in a bit, okay? But you have to realize that to understand where you're at on this compass ring, you have to have those letter designations on there as well, which makes it now a bearing at that point. When you add those letters in there, it becomes what's called a true bearing. If we came down here somewhere in the bottom of this bad boy, and we wanted to say go back, let's say we wanted to go back here to base camp from this point, okay? We're going to lay it down this direction. Again, we've got to get our north toward the top. We got to find ourselves a line we can line up with and still keep our compass here, which just means sliding it up a little bit, just like this. Now we have a reading of 60 degrees west southwest, okay? And that's how you read that compass. But again, if you're using that same compass all the time, it's not going to be a problem for you. Okay, so looking at this compass, we're at 2,000 mils is our reading there. And the next hard number is 2,200 mils. So in between there, you've got five marks that represent 50 mils per mark. All right, so you're going 2,000, 2,050, 2,100, 2,150, 2,200. So those movements of that thing are moving you a ton of mills at a time on a compass like this. So you can't get very accurate with mills on a compass of this style at all. But if that's your measurement system, it's easy enough for you just to say it goes from zero to 64, right? And call that 20, in between 21, 22, 23, 24, so it's still a measurement system that you can use. It's just not going to be any more accurate than degrees. And it's not going to be something you can tell somebody else that happens to have a compass that's in degrees. I just wanted you guys to be able to see that today visually because it does happen here at the school that people get the wrong compass off Amazon and don't realize it. So pay attention to the description on that compass when you buy it if you want one that's in degrees and not a quadrant or mills compass because it can get confusing. Now, the one thing I would tell you with this is Obviously, a 360-degree compass is the most common compass out there. It's the one that most people use. However, if you're going to do geological work, survey work, any of that kind of stuff, you're probably going to use a quadrant method with the compass that you're using. So when you get into engineering-type compasses and surveying-type compasses, those compasses are all going to be set up in quadrants for the most part. So you'll want to make sure that you understand that if that's your chosen field of study, then maybe you go with a quadrant compass right off the bat and get used to using that so that you understand it well. Guys, listen, this was just a quick video on three different measurement systems that you may see on compasses, especially if you buy the wrong one or someone else buys one for you and it comes in and it's the wrong one. Again, very usable compass as long as you're the only one using it. The problem becomes when you try to pass that information to someone else and instead of being common, like degrees on their compass, you give it to them in mills or you give it to them on a quadrant bearing, they're going to have problems figuring that out. So I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.